Thank you. To start the evening off, Madam Clerk, may we have a roll call vote for attendance, please? Yes. Councilman Morato. Here. Councilwoman Souza. Here. Council Vice President Rodericks. Here. And Council President Britta. Here. Uh, next item, please. Seal the minutes. Make a motion to seal the executive uh, session minutes. Second. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Morato. Aye. Councilman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. And we proceed right on. If I'm not mistaken, that's proclamations. Yes, it is. Proclamations. Tess Farnsworth, Bryn Fournier, Brendan Cute, and Kathleen Holohan for community service recognition presented by Councilwoman Souza and Councilman Cahoon. Thank you and good evening everyone. Unfortunately, my colleague, um, Councilman Cahoon, is away on a business trip, so he's not able to be here today, but he sends his warm wishes um, and congratulates um, our group of um, Littles Townies um, for today's event. So um, I, we thought, given the holiday season where it's a time of giving and appreciation, um, it was fitting that these three uh, children be recognized um, publicly, though they are um, highly recognized throughout the summer for their delicious lemon head stand. Um, we thought that it would be appropriate for them to come before the council since we felt so moved um, by their dedication and their passion for the community and looking to help others. So five years ago, um, Auntie's Lemonheads was established. Um, it started with um, an aunt who babysat, um, babysits three of her niece, um, children, nieces and nephews, and decided to have a fun activity as we all try to do when we have a house full of children. What are we going to do to keep them entertained? Um, and being the summer and the months are warm um, and everybody loves lemonade, what better thing to do than your own lemonade stand? So um, Auntie's Lemonheads was born. Um, so every summer, the kids would uh, come out in front of their home on a tiny street, and they would uh, provide lemonade to many people in the community, including our public safety officers who um, would come by, neighbors, friends, and family. Um, with that money and the profit that they made, um, they would donate it to another local establishment in our community, um, Hope and Faith, who provides meals um, amongst other uh, things to uh, needy families in our community. Um, year one, our children, uh, the children had raised uh, $317 um, as their startup business, which isn't too bad given the time frame of the summer. Uh, year two, they made $425. Year three, $932, um, year four, $1,167, and a five-year total of $4,396, which is an outstanding accomplishment. Um, <clears throat> we have Tess, um, who is a nine-year-old at our uh, fourth grader in our Waddington Elementary School. Uh, Brennan is an, uh, 80 years old, and he's a third grader at Myron J. Francis. And Bren, who is eight years old, uh, second grader at Sacred Hot. Um, behind us are pictures of the children um, going shopping with Carl, who runs our um, Hope and Faith. And you can see some of the um, patrons that come out uh, and support the lemonade stand. And they're, I'm sure, loyal, loyal customers who come repeatedly throughout the year, which is uh, why they've done so well and very successful. So... Um, on behalf of myself and my colleagues, um, Councilman Cahoon and the rest of the City Council, um, I'd like to recognize um, Brennan Fournier for her selflessness, compassion, and service to help those in need within the East Providence community. And I'd also like to um, congratulate Tess Fornsworth for her selflessness, compassion, and service to help those in need in the community of East Providence. You're welcome. 
Brennan Cute, I'd like to acknowledge, thank him for his selflessness, compassion, and service to help the community. Uh, And all of this would not be possible if it wasn't for Auntie. So I'd like to thank our very own Kathleen Hollihan, who is a city employee, for being a role model to these children and having them engaged, teaching them the work ethics of what a small business and an entrepreneurship is, what it is to be compassionate um, to your community, give to others who are in need. Um, and we appreciate everything you do in the community and here in the city of East Providence as one of our dedicated clerks. Yay. Now, if I can just get a picture Cat, with all the kids. Yeah. Council? Yeah. You'll stand behind me. Just a second. Yeah, stay there. We we decorated so. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. Okay. And Miss Clark, come on, we see you in the audience. Three, two. Oh no! Don't come on. Okay. <laughs> Start over. Three, two, one. I just took a whole bunch of them. Yeah, you did. <laughs> All right. It's so cute. I can't even. <laughs> I'm getting blinded by that flash. <laughs> no, you get blinded. Just one, Carl. No, just one. Oh, he's got it. I'm going Thank you. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Councilwoman Souza and Councilman Cajon for putting this on the docket this evening. Well deserved. We'll proceed in the order that we are in at this point in time. Next on the docket, please. Next on the docket is communication. Steve Costa, Bright Ridge Christmas Dinner. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Costa. Good evening, Council, Councilwoman, City Clerk, and City Solicitor, and the residents of East Providence. Um, again, we approach our fourth annual. Christmas community dinner for the city of East Providence. So we just wanted to come up today to let everyone know that it is underway and it's going to be on Christmas morning. It'll be from noon to five. Um, we will have, uh, we're looking for donations. We're actually going to ask City Hall if we can put a box out front like we did last year for clothes. Um, they will be in different varieties. Um, we just, I'm going to be honest, we put it out yesterday and I, believe it or not, we've already have 95% of the stuff already donated. So this, the community of East Providence is awesome. I mean, just to see how fast people get together and call, it's amazing. Like, this is, and we hope to see people come by. Councilman Brito is usually always with us. Councilwoman Susan is always with us. And it's a great time to see what goes on. I mean, it's, it's really, we have friends that come and do haircuts. We, this, this year we're, fi uh, we're happy to have a couple of women that are going to come and do the women's fingernails. So we try to get different things every year. So we do have a lot of toys that were donated to us because there is going to be a home that has some battered children. So they're going to come and join us this year. So, and Lisa's going to inform you on a little bit more stuff than Tony will. Hi, my name is Lisa George. Um, I live in Rumford. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that um, anybody that wants to donate anything, anybody that wants to volunteer time, um, I'm gonna hint, we're going to have a flyer put up um, with my phone number on it. You can call me at any time. We do um, set up usually on Christmas Eve all night long. So if anybody wants to volunteer Christmas Eve because they can't make it out on Christmas, that's fine. We do it Christmas morning. Um, us cooks usually get there at about 9 o'clock, so we usually have people coming in around uh, 11 a.m. And um, 
it runs till about five, six o'clock at night. So anybody that wants to volunteer their time, um, they can give me a call. My phone number is 401-516-1313. And again, my name is Lisa. Anything that you want to donate at all um, or volunteer, you can give me a call at any time. Good evening. Yes, my name's Anthony Ferreira. And uh, my main job is dishes and doing the driving. <laughs> but um, Lisa didn't mention that even if you don't drive, we would deliver a meal to you. We would go to your house, pick you up, bring you to the Bright Ridge Club. Mm -hmm. So the goal is um, everybody in the city and around should have a meal and will have a meal. Mm -hmm. um, it's. Uh, I want to thank the community and the small businesses because without them, we would just be driving around with empty vehicles and stuff. So, and I want to thank all you guys that you know stop by and stuff like that, especially you, Anna, Bobby, and the guys. So that's it. So if you know anybody, just start jotting down names. Lisa will coordinate all that to get a ride to go to the club. Like I said, we got food, games, clothes mm -hmm. for people. So it's not you just go there to have a meal. You spend a couple hours. If you don't drive, we'll bring you. Back Back home, we'll pick up another group of people. That's what the goal is. So nobody should be alone and be without a meal. So I want to um, thank the council for letting this happen in the community. And just to let everyone know how well this is going on. Our first year we started with 87 people, and last year we fed 517 people. Yeah. So it's been a little Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys have done a wonderful job, and you're absolutely right. It is a great community, um, and we do pull together when we need to to provide for the rest of the community. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to move right along and proceed over to the next item, which is uh, number seven, approval for the consent calendar for a vote. Um, this is for the tax abatement. All items on the consent calendar are considered to be a routine and non-controversial uh, nature by the city Council and will be enacted uh, by one motion. Um, Make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion on the floor for approval of the consent. consent. Mm -hmm. Second. We have a second. Roll call vote, please. Uh, Councilman Rodericks. Aye. Uh, Councilwoman Souza. Aye. And Councilman Morado. Aye. And myself, Councilman Brito. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Moving right along uh, to, and that would include, I think, uh, the council journals as well uh, from October 29th, November 5th, and November 19th. Uh, should I vote on that yes. as well? Yes, please. Okay, so. Um, the President. Uh, and this is again for uh, approval for consent. Move approval of council journals October 29, November 5, November 19, all 2019, all regular session and executive session. Uh, thank you, Councilman. Uh, second whatever. that motion. We have a second on the floor. Uh, Councilman, roll call vote. Councilman Roderick. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Uh, Councilman Morado. Aye. And myself, uh, Councilman Brito. Aye. Thank you. Public comment. Do we have any public comments at this point in time? If not, we could just proceed, uh, Mr. Solicitor. Why don't we do this? Um, if there's no one that signed up, no one signed up? Okay. Public comment. Oh, did, did you sign up? Did you want Did you want to go up and speak about something? All right, you can go right Come up. Come on up. <laughs> go, go, yeah. This is, this is it, public comment. Speak your piece or forever hold it. <laughs> Till the next meeting. <laughs> Until the next meeting. <laughs> okay, so. Just say your name for the record for me. Mm -hmm. Um. My name's Gina, <clears throat> it's Billy Jean LaRoche, nicknamed Gina. Um, my, my thing about um, the speed cameras is safety. Um, but, uh, and I quickly, <laughs> quickly threw together, I found an article um, from the Washington Post from the 15th of May. Uh, 2019, and it reads, um, nearly 1.6 million motorists in Maryland were captured by a speed camera in fiscal 2018. According to analysis by AAA, brought in nearly 64 million in ticket revenue. Um, I wanted to move on to Pawtucket, but we'll do that another time because um, they are using them in the end. Pawtucket and the chief, Tina, they have a woman chief of police, Tina Concavs, I don't know, um, yeah. 
you caught me off guard. So that's my piece. <laughs> Well, thank you. It was introduced, I could tell you, it was introduced not as a money maker. It's because it's one of the issues, one of the top issues, especially for me, that I received from constituents about cars traveling, not only on main roads, but more importantly on the uh, secondary roads as well. So it's just an ongoing problem, and we've had this discussion multiple, many times. And it's not only in this city, but it, as you can see, it's throughout the state and the country. It's, it's a nationwide problem that we have. So thank you. Right. Um, and that's, I think, the final uh, one we have for public comment. All right, moving right along to uh, licenses and uh, events approval. Licenses not requiring public hearing for a vote. The first is application for a vigilant license. Proud Mary's doing business as Union Burrito. This is for a vote. Is the, con is the applicant here? No? Uh, all the paperwork in, please? All the paperwork has been turned in, yes. Any questions, concerns, issues, problems that need to be addressed at this time before we proceed with a vote? And this person has everything in line with as far as taxes and any dues to the city. There's no outstanding. Uh, yeah, there is nothing that's outstanding, um, at least okay. to the city. Okay. okay. Mr. President, uh, so this is the same building, same uh, business where Proud Mary was. It's the same owner. Just they're changing the business. They'll now be uh, Union Burrito. So it's just the type of food that's changing, which would require the new victualling. Mm -hmm. So everything else seems to be in order. I move approval. Okay. Second that. Was that a second, Councilman? I'll second that. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Morato? Aye. Councilwoman Souza? Aye. Council Vice President Roger? Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Thank you. The next item is application for holiday sales license. Proud Mary is doing business as Union Burrito. And this is also for a vote. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Councilman Morato. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Rogers. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Next item, please. Next item is application for holiday sales workout world for a vote. Again. Everything in order? Everything is in order. Okay. Move approval. Oh, we have the applicant. Would you like to come up and speak on behalf of, no? <laughs> Just want to make yourself present? Thank you. Well, thank uh, thank yeah. you for coming because not all the applicants always come, so it's it's appreciated. Okay. But I, I would move approval. Okay. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilman Morato. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Thank you. Moving right along, mayoral's appointments requiring council approval. Yes, the they're all set. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. I'll try to get this. In. The first is John Pacheco, Board of Assessment. Also for the vote, the term is from would be from 12-3-2019 to 12-2-2025. Mr. President, may I ask, are we going to vote individually? Yes. On these, okay. Mm -hmm. I. Um, Good evening, council members. Good, good evening. Um, uh, at the pleasure of council, we have any or need any discussion as far as the first one. We're going to stop one and go right down the road. I don't have any questions on this first first one. Okay. So I, I would move approval. Okay. Well, Mr. Pacheco, I understand he would be new to service in the city and volunteering is not a reappointment, hasn't been around before, so it's a new face on a board, uh, which is a good thing. I would move approval. Okay. Second. All right. Roll call vote. Councilman Morato. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Roger. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Next, Marilyn Walsh will be the next one for uh, personal hearing board. And the term would be from December 3rd, 2019 to December 2nd, 2025. Mr. President, uh, the same thing. I've, I've come to know um, Ms. Walsh through the years. Um, Casually, the former neighbor hasn't been that involved that I know in any boards or things in the city um, or with with government, and I think it's another fresh face coming forward. And uh, before I make the motion, I don't know if there are other comments, but I'm prepared to move approval. Um, just 
just for purposes of knowledge, what is her background? Um, does she have anything, any background that would allow her to be the personal hearing board? Mm -hmm. So um, <clears throat> she's worked in labor relations, both on management and on the union side, for 42 years. Mm -hmm. um, she retired in 2017. And uh, she served as an elected delegate for unionized registered nurses uh, for uh, before she was promoted to the administration. Um, the last position she held was uh, the senior VP and, uh, and chief human resources officer for CARE New England. Thank you for that. Very good resume. Yeah. <laughs> And she's oh, yeah. a nurse. I, I was just going to say that the <laughs> nurse might <laughs> might help with the councilwoman. No, bias there. Good, no she's I would, I would move approval. <laughs> oh, okay, so we have a motion on the floor right now for approval from Ms. Second. Walsh. I'll second it. And we have a second. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Murado. Aye. Councilwoman Sousa. Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Next one, John Braga. John Braga for. Um, Yes, uh, Madam Clerk, thank you. And uh, this was the one I was hoping that we would have the separate votes. Uh, I, I'm not having any issues right now, but um, I know that Councilman Cahoon had a few questions about this uh, appointment, not necessarily the person, but uh, the position to be consistent with his uh, previous vote for uh, another seat on, on the zoning board. Um, and. I understand, I was talking to the mayor's office that Mr. Braga would like to be available in case we have questions of him. And he had been on before, been off, is looking to um, accept the position again. So there may be questions from all of us. He would like to make a statement. And Councilman Cahoon, because of work, is out of state tonight. So I, I think that um, I would be prepared to move that we table this appointment till the meeting of December 17th, is it? The yes, next meeting? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Solicitor, yeah. do we need to vote on that for a table the, uh, for yes. further discussions? Okay. Um, any, any further concerns or questions from the council at this point in time to proceed with a vote to table for the next meeting? None. If not, uh, Madam. Second, a motion. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Second it. Roll call vote. To, and this is again the table to the next city council meeting for uh, 12 17, uh, 19. Councilman Murado? Aye. Councilwoman Souza? Aye. Council Vice President Roderick? Aye. And Council President Brito? Aye. Thank you. Uh, moving right along, council communications discussion only. Holiday festivities schedule in Rumford by Council President okay. Brito. Uh, again, this is for uh, information only. Uh, December 7th, as it says here on the dock at 6 p.m., uh, there will be a tree lighting ceremony at the corner or intersection of Hoyt and Wilson Avenue. Um, I haven't been able to take that drive by, but I'm hoping that the tree lights will be up prior to that time, that date. Um, December 8th would be at 1 o'clock um, Hunts Mills, a hayride between. Uh, the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. Um, the Historical Society uh, will be there. They'll be uh, gathering for tours and informational sessions on Hunts Mills and uh, trails uh, leading behind the uh, Hunts Mill house as well. Um, we'll have some hot chocolate for everybody and again the uh, hayride which is free of charge. And then I just want to make it clear that everyone's aware that I have here on a docket for December 14th and I made this announcement last meeting for December 14th for the tree lighting ceremony at Pawtucket Avenue Center. That date is changed also to December 8th. I can't see why we're going to be waiting for two weeks into the uh, into the month to light, those, to light that tree up. So that meeting is December 8th. 8th, which is a Sunday, um, that evening, uh, 6 p.m. at the intersection of Pawtucket Avenue and Center Street. That great big tree there will be lighting that up as well, having hot chocolate and caroling. And that's all I have to say. The next item is Bread of Life Fundraiser, Council President. And the only thing I would say to that is that uh, non-perishable goods, uh, that as you come to this event, uh, for, and this is the hay ride between 1 and 3 p.m., please um, bring some non-perishable goods. Thank you. The next item is holiday announcements. Councilwoman Sousa. Um, so I wanted to start off by um, 
announcing a couple of other holiday festivities that are going to be taking place um, in the city. Um, we have our annual Winter Fest that is held at the Senior Center. Um, that will be Saturday, December 7th, um, starting at 12 in the afternoon. Afternoon till 8. Santa will be there. There'll be um, lots of vendors selling um, a variety of different things. I know um, Hope and Faith will be there um, and other um, nonprofit organizations looking for some donations. Um, those who have adopted a tree, uh, remember that December 5th is um, the day that you're picking up your lights and decorating the trees, so you have a couple of days to do so prior to um, the 11, uh, the 12 o'clock kickoff on Saturday. Um, and I want to thank all those in the um, Winter um, Fest community, uh, committee that um, worked so hard and diligently to uh, put on such a wonderful event for the community, along with the CTC construction students who uh, this year have built wooden sign holders um, for the signs that go in front of the trees. Um, I did get a chance to look at that and they did a really nice job. So congratulations to those uh, students who worked hard on um, adding something to that event. Um, next, I um, wanted to um, just thank everyone who came out. We had uh, November 30th, this past Saturday, uh, our city's tree lighting event here at City Hall. Um, it was a wonderful uh, turnout. We had uh, a large group of children and uh, residents who came out along with um, some of the city's delegation um, here on the council and in the state house. Uh, so I wanted to thank the sponsors, uh, Honeydew for providing hot chocolate, Maggie from Taunton Avenue Bakery for her wonderful cake, um, all those who um, assisted in decorating, the city clerk who was instrumental in helping facilitate um, a lot of this um, activity with myself. The kids had a great time um, with the craft table. Uh, Miss Chrissy Rossi for um, providing the face painting um, with a, a friend of hers. That was also a big hit. I think she was here later than Santa Claus was with the long line of faint, uh, painting faces. Um, I also like to thank the mayor's office for um, for being here and uh, providing some uh, support um, in terms of staff from City Hall to clean up and provide the um, PA system and such. So thanks again to everybody who came out. It was a wonderful um, event, um, and thank you for everybody who participated and sponsored. Um, next, we also have an event down in Rivy, um, our Riverside <laughs> area, <laughs> um, but I'll let um, Councilman sure. from that ward take. Thank you. So this, is, this will be our fourth annual tree lighting at the Riverside Square. It's going to be uh, this year, as in the past year, it's going to be at the Borealis Coffee Shop. Uh, it's going to be from 6 to 9. We're going to have... Uh, activities and uh, ornament decorating for the children, uh, hot chocolate. Uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's been a fun event. We're going to be stringing uh, pasta for the uh, garland. And it may be actually a surprise visit by Santa Claus, but that's to be determined still if someone volunteers to do it. What? Maybe someone from you know, Rumford can volunteer up here. Ooh. But anyways, uh, I'll volunteer. Working on that, so mm -hmm. it'll be a fun, it's a fun event, and it's and it's grown in popularity. Every year, it's grown bigger and bigger. So, anyone's welcome. Oh, it's nice to hear that you got your wire drop, Mr. Councilman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's the mic drop. <laughs> Inside. Inside. Okay. <laughs> Oh, then that's right it. Along. That wraps up our holiday. Uh, thank announcements. you, Councilwoman. And I'll tell you who's a very good face painter, Santa Claus. Excellent. Excellent face painter. Yeah. For future reference. Okay. The real one? Oh, the one that was, was out real here. One? Oh. Santa, yeah, the, Santa that was at the event. Santa that's out here. Yeah. Very good face painter. Um, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Next item, please. Next item is continued business, approval for remaining capital projects. Council Vice President Rodericks. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. President, um, my, my intent tonight is to just uh, focus in on where we're going with all the projects, uh, not necessarily uh, prepared to make any motions tonight. Um, we're piecing together a list. I did pass some sheets out. I'm not sure that it's yet complete. Um, but I know there has been sentiment on this council 
to, and I mean this in a positive way, to clean up the list. We've had some projects that have been on the hopper for years. And we had a department head at our last meeting uh, tell us for some 20 years he's been looking into getting a uh, couple of projects finished and finalized. So it's getting confusing to all of us, I know, because we have a long list. We have a lot of dollar signs. Some maybe were started. Some haven't even been looked at yet. And, and some have been completed. So that's not a bad thing. We, we've made some progress. So my intent tonight is to send a message um, not only to all of us to look look at the list and for whenever you want to do it, whether it's the next meeting or two or three down the line, if you have something you're interested in, um, otherwise we don't. I don't want to see them die on the vine, as could be the case. And I, I would like to just ask um, uh, of the mayor's office, Director Furtado, if you could get that message through the mayor's office to the department heads. I know some department heads have worked on projects. For instance, that fire suppression system that we did vote on at the last meeting, and there may be other projects. And then if you could forward to the council president uh, if there are some immediate priorities that this city would like to do, and then it's up, you know, we'll look at it and, and vote at it. So that, vote on it. So that's my intention. Uh, I did pass out some some of the items. Um, it doesn't appear to be totally complete yet, uh, but I think we're making some progress. We we have approved some. So um, any one of us can contact the city clerk and through the council president, I, I guess, and and put an item on for if not the next meeting, then the I guess we would go into January. So I would just leave leave the council with this, that I, I just don't want to see projects. I know the council presidents mentioned whether it was um, the rescue situation in, in Rumford or whatever the project is, now's our chance. We, we have a capital account. We, I understand we need to know how much we've already spent and what's left before we do any more. And that's what this was all about. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. What I would also request, if we can, uh, get a list of those projects that have already been approved in addition to uh, the amount that was approved. Uh, I do have that list, but if I'm not mistaken, there are items that were voted on that's not on this list as well. Uh, so if we can get an updated version of all the capital improvements have been approved up to this date, uh, the amount uh, that has been approved and the tally, the, the, the total of the uh, all the capital improvements uh, projects that we approve. I appreciate that as well. Um, okay, moving right along. Uh, item B is discussion of council rules, specifically Rule 5, miscellaneous provisions. Councilman Morato. So I'll make this very brief. I put this on uh, the last council I asked uh, our solicitor. Uh, look into and give us a an opinion as to Council Rule 5 uh, regarding people who approach, uh, whether it be residents or the mayor or anyone else, approaches the podium during council discussions without a vote of the uh, council. And the opinion I got, we all, all received this. It's pretty lengthy, and I appreciate the time that you took into putting this together. Mr. Solicitor, uh, but the end result, it's as I suspected, it's the council president's uh, opinion that his, it's his uh, council president the ability, has the ability to limit the mayor or anyone from interfering or interrupting what is essentially a meeting of the city council. I'm satisfied with that. And also, if this becomes an issue down the road, we also have the ability as a council to change that rule five to make it more specific and detail it the way we want it. So that's that's what I was looking for as far as I just want a clarification on that rule five. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Councilman. So uh, Madam Clerk, before we proceeded to new business, there is an ordinance that I have on here regarding animal shelter, and I'm not sure if the uh, uh, animal uh, or officer is here, Officer Muggles is here, because uh, in an event that he's out in the back, just so we can get him out. If he's not, let's just proceed with new business, but it, 
No, he's not here. Okay, so let, let's proceed with new business, please. Thank you. New business is beginning the process of revising the charter slash budget process. Councilman Morado. You know, uh, Council President. <laughs> Council President, <laughs> uh, if we could, that we can just go back to that uh, that uh, opinion for the Rule Five. If we can take a vote to put that on file, sure, for uh, for record purposes. Uh, uh, so, uh, what we'll be voting on essentially is um, on Rule Five uh, rules, uh, Council Rules specifically to Rule Five uh, that the Councilman had just alluded to that. Um, just for the record, um, place, it on, file so it's a place it on file so it becomes a public record. Uh, we're going to move to vote on that. Uh, can we have a, a roll call vote, please, at the councilman's request? Sure. Councilman Morado? Aye. Councilwoman Souza? Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks? Aye. And Council President Brito? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, okay. We'll go back to beginning the process of revising the charter budget process with Councilman Morado and Assistant Solicitor Conley. So, uh, I put this on the docket, uh, and I want to get this discussion going earlier than later. Uh, this last budget discussion was a huge learning experience for me, and I think it was, I can say that for everyone up here, due to the new uh, form of government. And all, of the, all the, the time frames were, appeared that they were shortened due to the veto power and so on and so forth. So I got, I was in touch, I put myself in touch with uh, Assistant Solicitor Dillon Conley, who has experience with the charter and being on that charter commission. And my idea in, for discussion is to, through ordinance perhaps, start having discussion on receiving the budget sooner, uh, or how information is gathered and distributed to the council members so we can better prepare for budget discussions. Um, I felt that I was such at a disadvantage and really had to key in and ask for specific questions and ask for the right questions to get the right answers to a lot of those budget discussion items. And I, I found that to be very frustrating. Uh, and I can only speak for myself, but I would like this process to start so we can you know, help ourselves for the next budget season, which, believe it or not, it's not that far away. So uh, just for discussion only, and Dylan, if you can give us some insight as how we can go about doing that through ordinance. Sure. And if I may not to interrupt you, but, Councilman, if I'm not mistaken, you weren't on the commission. You were the legal representation of Correct. the charter, if Correct. I'm not mistaken. Okay. Thank you for that. Yep. Um, so uh, you can kind of break it down into two provisions. First off is the process for uh, amending the charter, which um, the city of East Province is relatively familiar with at this point. It's underneath uh, Rhode Island Constitution Article 13, Section 2, but in particular Section 8. It is a legislative power. The, in order to amend the charter, the council passes a resolution. That resolution essentially does two things. It certifies the proposed amendment, and it certifies the question to go on the ballot. In terms of timeline on that front, uh, you do need to certify the question by October 5th because it goes to the Secretary of State's office for approval before it's placed on ballots. August 5th or October 5th? Uh, I believe I have October 5th yeah, written down in an in election year for a general election, but I can double check that. Um, if you'll bear with me for one moment. Oh, it's August 5th. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. It's August 5th. August 5th? August 5th. Thank you, Councillor. That's not sure. Um, and so th that's the process by which you can propose amendments to the Charter. Amendments to the Charter don't actually occur uh, via legislative action. It's just a proposal. They're voted on by the public. Um, the language, though, is determined by the Council and its legislative powers. Uh, specific to the budget. Now, uh, you can certainly amend anything that's in the uh, charter. Specific to taxes, it has to, the 
proposal for the amendment has to happen a regular meeting instead of a special meeting. It's a small technicality, but it is in the Constitution. Um, but what is in the Charter is is not the only way to do something. It's usually a minimum or a maximum standard. So you can either be more or least restrictive depending on how the language is drafted. So uh, when it comes to the budget in our Charter, it says things like uh, no later than seven days, no later than 45 days. So you could create an ordinance that requires earlier than seven days and earlier than 45 days without amending the charter. Um, it would still be in conformance with the charter. So basically, while the charter sets uh, a set of deadlines, you can improve upon those deadlines. You just can't exceed those deadlines. So um, any ordinance that sought to increase the amount of time for charter uh, for budget review would not be in violation of the Charter. On the flip side, and I know this is not anyone's interest, it was condensed enough as it was, it would be impermissible under the Charter to decrease the amount of time that you would have for review. Uh, so in generic terms, to expand the amount of time that you have to review under the Charter would not be a violation. So would it be possible to uh, well, how, how would we proceed with this? Would we, would we just have more discussions on it? Would you, would the council like the assistant solicitor to put something in draft form so we can at least look at and then, you know, expand upon that and discuss those points? Well, I think, if I may, I think that um, having been felt the same way that I, you've expressed um, how this budget process went, and I understand that it's a new form of government, so there was a lot of learning curves from the administrative that need that took place. Um, and having been on a previous um, council with budget um, seasons that had gone um, smoother um, and more efficiently with less meetings, um, I would be inclined to um, have some more specific wording uh, to give the council more time to go over the material that's presented um, because we're not in City Hall on a day-to-day -day basis and have access to um, the material that the rest of the employees at City Hall or the administrative do. Um, so in my personal opinion, I am of the mindset that to do the job that we are elected to do, which is to budget properly and be fiscally responsible to the um, residents that we um, represent and trying to maintain a, um, a lowest tax increase, if at all, um, a tax increase on a yearly basis, you need a lot of time and you need to look through and you need to make some heavy um, choices and tough decisions similar to this capital budget. You know, we've been going over this capital budget um, looking at these projects, cutting things, um, thinking to put something on the back burner for maybe we can do it on a different year, it doesn't have to be this year, in an effort to try to save money. Um, and that, and this is just a capital improvement budget. We're not talking about um, departments that you could probably save um, some significant money if we had the time to really look through and ask those questions that we need to ask um, and not feel so rushed um, to do so. So in my personal opinion, I think um, it is best to look at some expansion in our um, time of getting the materials so that we can have meetings um, at an earlier time than the 1st of, you know, October um, when the budget's due three weeks later um, for final passage. In, in addition to uh, my discussion with uh, Assistant Solicitor, uh, Dylan uh, Conley. I think it would be also a good idea to, and some municipalities do do this, is to uh, create a year-end report of uh, finances. For example, a year-end report of outstanding uh, previous ca uh, capital improvement projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, that way we have a clear picture of what was done, what needs to be done, and what perhaps came on the budget, what came over budget, and then we close out those projects. And then that money can get transferred into the new capital improvement budget, correct? That's correct. So that way we, we don't just have, and that was part of our problem, is having all of these different accounts that we found out at various times. At least we have a clear picture of what we're dealing with and what we have at, at hand going into the new budget season with capital improvement projects. They're not just hanging as that these projects from 
the uh, sprinkler system to the uh, fire safety system last week and so on and so forth. Uh, I had recommended that we perhaps do that in a uh, form of a resolution. However, Dylan feels that by including that into that ordinance that it would solve that and we don't have to continue doing resolutions. Am I correct on that? or? That's correct. Uh, you can basically set forth in the ordinance a requirement that this occurs annually. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to deal with uh, individual projects by resolution at that annual meeting or ho however you want to set it up, um, I do like putting systems in place. It makes things predictable for staff. It makes deliverables predictable for the administration. Um, even just setting agendas, it's difficult when there's um, sort of a, a moving goalpost. But if we know that every year we're going to do the same thing at about the same time, it kind of flows much more easily, as, as the councilwoman pointed out earlier, with previous experiences. And, and, and just to spin off of that, um, I would like to see, uh, and I don't know if we can do this from a legal perspective, from a charter point of view, um, that perhaps we do get a capital improvement budget early on. I would think by now that most departments, if not all department heads, would have an idea, at least a general idea, as to what they need and what they're looking for. So sometime in the spring, perhaps, that if we can get that capital, at least the capital uh, side of things, that budget, so by the time we're starting the actual budget itself, we're not worried about or going back and forth with the capital improvement budget because we've already reviewed it early on that we're focusing on, you know, just the overall expenditures and income for the city. Mm -hmm. um, so, and again, I don't know where we stand as far as the charter is concerned, but if we can get that, say, early spring, because I would think that the cap... Uh, uh, department heads would know what they want at that point in time. Now, it might need to be tweaked at the final version uh, in an event that something goes wrong um, between that time. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps a DPW truck goes down and they desperately need something, whatever it may be. But if we get that capital improvement budget early on, uh, review it prior to the commencement of the actual budget itself, that way, come budget season, when we're actually doing our workshop for the budget, we're not focusing on the capital improvement because that portion has already been taken care of. There might be one, two, maybe three items that might be inclusive to it since the time it was submitted to us. But now we're focusing on just, you know, the day-to-day the -day stuff um, as far as expenditures and income. You should be able to do that. We should? Yes. Okay. And my, my ad would be I, I don't uh, disagree with anything I've heard. Um, I would just like to add a couple of comments, though. Um, I don't want to be dismissive of what we did accomplish, mm -hmm. because I think with uh, Councilman Cahoon's leadership from our side of the table, I thought we had a pretty good budget process. I thought that uh, we all felt that way. We were hearing good uh, audits from the community and and others i mean we painstakingly sat here five six nights till 11 o'clock at night um which is our job i'm not complaining and we did sift through a lot of things and we had three new council members so i think that um that along with the experienced members i think that we we had a pretty good process and o overall um you know, we went through page by page, item by item. Now, do we want to get something sooner? Yes. So in regards to that, I think, um, and I'd ask uh, Solicitor Conley this, I would think we'd have to involve in anything that we're going to change in the charter or any discussion or workshop, we'd want to bring in our finance people to make sure we can do what we're saying we want to do. One example and I know he's here tonight. I don't know if we're going to ask for any comments from department heads, but um, D Director um, Moore, when I, I asked for some information and we were talking about uh, things in the budget, and he said, well, we I can't give you that now because we haven't done that yet, whether it was a contract or something that was up. So I think there are some things that we probably can't just, snap our fingers and say, I want it in June. Uh, am I off base at all? Or, no, uh, I, I think there's sort of what you can do under the charter and what you can do in practical reality. And I think yeah. it's an excellent idea to touch base with Malcolm and the, the finance department in regards to what is practically reality, real and yeah. plausible. 
So, Councilman Rogers, uh, I am not disagreeing. I, I think this budget process, uh, I can I couldn't see doing it any other way, which you know, other than the way we did it. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's always room for improvement. Uh, there's always, you know, better ways to doing things. Uh, I saw that there was a lot of faults, and I know there's room for improvement. Uh, this is one of the most important pieces of our job and duty is that budget, and why not put things in to play where it will help us with that process and make the process go a lot smoother and help us make the right decisions, which I'm not saying that we did not, but just help us in the future with that. But I recommend, and this is not an easy topic to you know, navigate through, what I recommend is that I will, if, if by the first meeting in January, would you be able to have something drafted? Absolutely. So what I recommend is, is that each council person reach out to Dylan and, you know, put in your two cents per se, and then will we work through this with the finance director and such? And now you're talking up. about budgeting. Uh, are you talking about overall? Well, um, talking about time frame, charter amendments um, I'm, as well. The, the, just a budget. I'm talking okay. about the budget for now. Okay. The charter conversations. I would like to actually recommend that we have uh, a couple of workshops right after January uh, to meet that if we want to do if we do want to improve right the Charter Commission did a lot of work but they had a limited amount of time doing it and they were charged with specific you know questions and and issues to work through so there's still room for improvement in yep. that respect I right now I'm concentrating on the budget ordinance and then I would recommend right after January at some point we either include it into the uh, regular council meeting or have one or two or three special sessions just to work on charter because that also is a big you know, ticket item and we have to make sure that we do our due diligence to put things right and, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, no uh, di no di disagreement with anything you said. And, and the more we do right up front at the front end of all this, the less we have to be worried about in the back end of this Absolutely. coming you know, during the budget workshops right. and hearings. So, you know, and, and we don't have to, you know, <clears throat> tackle the issues, everything all at one time. I mean, we have, obviously, we have enough time going through the winter and the spring, so it doesn't have to be a, you know, a, a heavy load. We could just constantly just stay on top of things throughout the winter and spring leading into uh, the summer. Okay. Very good. So, uh, through the council law, President, since we have Dylan here, can we just move up the C item? Sure. I have, term no, I have no. Councilman uh, Rogers doesn't mind. Is that the short-term rental regulation? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Sure. No my my um, intent here, this was based on constituent uh, concerns that I, I received, and Councilman Morado also, this happened to just come from um, a Riverside neighborhood, but it, it applies to the whole city. And that is, I, I think we're seeing a, an uptick in the Airbnb and other short rentals, short-term rentals. I know there are some state law in, involved. There is state law involved. Uh, I didn't know if we have a city policy on this. Um, in a nutshell, the, the neighborhood concern that Mr. Morado and I looked into was the fact that there was a particular home that was doing a lot of short-term rentals, people, cars, commotion, in and out, a lot of traffic, and the owner didn't live there owner of the home. So I know that the state, I looked up a few things. I also talked with uh, Director Furtado about this. and um, So that's where I'm going with this. Do we have anything on the books? Should we have anything on the books? Or is state law sufficient to just follow that? The state law really deals with um, taxation more so than anything else. Uh, I think what you're raising is fundamentally a zoning question. Um, I am intimately familiar with Airbnb zoning issues. I've done zoning ordinances in uh, Westerly and Johnson on this front, and I personally operate an Airbnb in Providence and just had to go through uh, their new permitting process. Um, so the, uh, the, the thing that Providence did that I think might be successful in East Providence is that it requires that an Airbnb in a residential zone be owner-occupied. 
So uh, by doing that, you kind of, by default, get rid of those nuisances because no one wants to live in a party house themselves, right? Um, so well, go ahead. <laughs> my parents might disagree, yeah. but um, uh, so the the advantage that you have in these R1, R2, R3 zones, or residential districts more generally, is by requiring someone to be an owner-occupant um, in order to rent out as an Airbnb, they sort of manage the guests in a way that they don't if they're not present. Um, but you don't, there's also a trade-off where uh, cities do see, um, you know, increased tourism or just expenditure at small businesses and local businesses. Uh, so you don't need to curb that too much by allowing it in commercial zones without owner occupancy. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be a successful formula elsewhere in the country. Um, and I know that is certainly uh, the way Providence took it. Um, it Westerly's issues were more related to uh, beach access and sort of seasonal um, expansion and uses. But again, really what was driving it was nuisances. Um, something that we saw in Johnston was an issue where um, you have large numbers of unrelated uh, persons living in the same house and you're moving kind of not just an Airbnb renting out the whole unit but renting out room by room by room okay. and those were tending to be problem houses in terms of uh, public health and safety mm -hmm. and so uh, limiting the amount of unrelated persons that could be in the same property at the same time um, manages sort of the chances that you have 15 bedrooms being rented out to 15 people that don't know each other, right? Uh, which is a single family being turned into a hotel overnight. And I don't think frat anyone house. wants that. Or a frat <laughs> house, exactly. Um, th they're relatively straightforward. It is zoning, so it would be uh, a presentation before the council, uh, farm it out to planning for recommendation, and it comes back for first and second passage. Would it, be, uh, would it give you enough time to do a draft ordinance for the second meeting? in January or do you need more time? Uh, I, I can definitely put something together. If if we want something more detailed than just sort of pivoting what they're doing in Providence, which would be my initial inclination, um, the only other thing I haven't mentioned that that ordinance relies upon is a temporary use permit. So it's uh, it requires them to essentially register with the city, guarantee that there's certain health and safety standards in place at every Airbnb. And you can lose the temporary use permit if basically you're, you're misbehaving, right? Well, so it's a way to keep that, that was a concern of mine with health and safety, smoke detectors, all those things that, you know, you would need to have in a rental property, in any property, but you don't want to see 15 bedrooms and, God forbid, the house goes up in flames and then the neighbor's house catches and, you know. And, and I don't see an immediate problem here. We, we had this one concern that came forward so i wouldn't push for a january meeting you know february i think uh, i don't think it's uh, unless other council people are hearing things in other wards um it's probably uh, i think just good to consider an overall zoning plan for this and if it's february fine whenever um not they're not beating the doors down about this problem but i did want to get back to the neighborhood they're Absolutely. not beating them down today. You can, not uh, today, yeah. Right, so the, uh, it's good to keep an eye on it. Like yes. That idea. Okay. And we'll we'll try to we'll aim for the last meeting in January. If not, like Councilmember Roderick said, if you don't, if you need more time, then you know that's fine. There's no one beating on the doors, but okay. All right. Does that sound fair? That sounds fair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. City Assistant City Solicitor. Next item, please. Next item would be under new business is item B, Providence River Dredging, South Quayville, and that's with Council Vice President Rodericks. I think this is my, my last item, hopefully. Uh, again, just for information to get back to uh, several constituents who are reacting to press reports of the dredging that's going on now in the Providence River and the plan to take fill from that dredging and put it on the South K, which is also the property now owned by Live Nation. And all of the information I could get was that this is clean fill. It's not land that we own anyway, although we could still uh, have a say if it was something, if it was illegal dumping. But it, it's a clean fill, and I... I agree and know that the river does need dredging. Uh, 
uh, in order to help with boating and tourism. And it, it, it's a small state. We're all in this together. Um, I would thank uh, Council President. I asked if um, our Director of um, Planning and Economic Development, uh, Bill Fazioli, if he could be at the meeting tonight to maybe just uh, echo that there are no major concerns, or if there is a concern, I would ask him if he could just uh, briefly address us, if that's okay with the council. And again, we can put put this at, put the constituents at at ease who have a good concern. Whenever you hear something is dredged, hmm. you don't want polluted material brought to our shores. But I don't think that's the case. Is it okay if Mr. Fazioli comes please, forward? Please do. He, he's a, a regular here at the meeting anyway. Yes. So. <laughs> Along with his partner, Mr. Luber, I see he's here. Oh, yeah. Drove in in the snow-filled streets from... <laughs> There we go. Good evening. Thank you, Council. Uh, as Councilman Roderick said, uh, yeah, it's clean fill. It's being tested by DEM. The whole uh, procedure is being overseen by the Coastal Resources Management Council, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the Nature Conservancy is involved, and also Save the Bay has provided some commentary. So uh, we have all the insurances that what's being uh, sent over from the uh, river in Providence onto the South Key is clean, and they welcome it because they need the uh, the material to help build up their property, uh, obviously, to uh, fortify it. So, uh, um, in fact, there's a standing invitation for anybody who wants to go and see the dredge uh, being, material being piped in action. Uh, I think there's a group meeting Friday at 2 o'clock on the South Key. So if you want to, uh, you know, be there and see how it works, how it's coming under the, the piping under the river, uh, I believe there's a, a group assembling there uh, to, to, to see it in person. Does the public have access to that area? Uh, no. No, it's still private property. No, so. I mean uh, to, to see this on Friday at 2 uh, I don't think it was intended to be a public, uh, you know, I think it's, it was just mainly something for city. Some city officials were invited uh, to see it firsthand. It was mentioned today at a meeting. So I don't think it's really meant to be a city uh, public outing. It's still private property. So, uh, but if any council members, I think if they want to participate, I, we could make those arrangements. Sure. I would be interested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, what time is it taking? place on Friday? Uh, 2 o'clock, uh, from what I understand, uh, but I can confirm the details. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Uh, we were at another meeting today, and the property owner mentioned that they, uh, they were, they'd be, you know, showing it to some city officials who would be interested. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you on my end. Thank okay. you. Uh, you all set with Yes. That? All right. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, we'll... Next item, please. Next item is ordinances. Item A, first passage for vote, is an ordinance and amendment of Chapter 3 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of East Providence, Rhode Island, 1998, as amended entitled Animals. Uh, so this is just an extension of the previous uh, an animal um, ordinance that was passed a couple of meetings ago. Um, and, and because of how long it was, we, we proceeded to do this in in halves as opposed to putting it all on at one time. However, with this portion of it, it this is a state law. Um, so all this is is we're updating our, our local ordinance to comply uh, with state law. Um, I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything on here that I would need to read. Um, at this point in time, should, should it be read? Or? No. So, so you're correct. So uh, we, we did part uh, one earlier, and actually we'll be voting on for second passage on that tonight. And then part two w deals with specifically with dogs. And uh, we had a very um, weak section as to how about the care of dogs uh, under the existing previous ordinances. And since that time, state law has been updated to be put a lot more strength into the care of dogs ordinance. If you remember, Councilman Souza had a, a question about tethering, and we said that was, this would be dealt with in the second part, and you'll see that this is all mm -hmm. taken care of. So basically what this does is make uh, state law conform to, excuse me, make our ordinance conform to state law and so that we can prosecute sure. these violations in our municipal court. And, and, this, and this passage, or, or, or not, uh, just concludes the entire ordinance for, the, um, uh, for, for animals, actually. There is one other thing that we had, we're looking into about the spading neutering of dogs. Um, as I indicated to you, um, mm -hmm. we, we're going to have to update 
uh, a state law. But that has to comply with state law, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. So we're okay. going to wait till the General Assembly asks right. them to give a sp specific permission to do that. Okay. So yes. Uh, at the pleasure of the council, does anyone have any questions uh, regarding this ordinance? Mr. President, I move approval. Okay, we have a motion for approval of the ordinance. Second, uh, first passage. And second, first passage. Uh, for first passage, and I'm going to request at this point in time, if it does proceed uh, in a positive fashion, that we put second passage on for the next council meeting on December 17th. Uh, roll call vote, please. Councilman Morado. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Roderick. Aye. And Council President Brito. All right, thank you. So if we can put second passage on for the December 17th meeting. And we'll get it advertised as well. Yes. Next ordinance, please. Next ordinance is a second and final passage for vote, also a public hearing, and that's an ordinance and amendment of Chapter 3 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of East Providence, Rhode Island, 1998, as amended, entitled Animals, sponsored by Council President Brito. Uh, as indicated earlier, uh, this is the second passage. Uh, first passage uh, went through unanimous. We had the uh, uh, Officer Muggles up here to explain. There were some questions and concerns regarding the, 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 the word and the verbiage on some of the language in the ordinance. It was clarified for us at that point in time. Um, so as opposed to uh, go in, we had a, a deep conversation uh, with respect to this to this first passage of the ordinance. And um, if, again, at the pleasure of the council, if anyone has any questions, and as far as prior to moving it for second passage. Mr. President, uh, is this please. public hearing or just? This is a public hearing. Okay, I'll, I'll wait and see if there's okay. any. So with that being said, uh, Councilman, that uh, this is a public hearing, so anyone wishing to choose to approach the podium to speak for or against this ordinance, uh, please do so. Again, I'm going to repeat myself before I close public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, uh, please do so. If not, public comment is now closed at the pleasure of the council. Um, to approve. We have a motion on the floor by Councilwoman Souza to approve. Second that. And we have a second motion by Councilman Morado. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Morado. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Roderick. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Thank you all. Moving right along to the next item. The next item is also second and final passage for vote in a public hearing. It's an ordinance and amendment of Chapter 18 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of East Providence, Rhode Island, 1998, as amended, entitled Vehicles and Traffic. This is sponsored by Councilman Cahoon. Just second passage. Second passage, yes. Um, make a motion to um, approve. I second that. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Should we offer Let's a public see. hearing? Yes. I'm sorry? Public Should hearing. Should we? Oh. oh, public hearing again. <laughs> Anyone here from the public wishing to speak for or against this ordinance, uh, vehicles and traffic, uh, please step up to the podium. Anyone here willing to speak for or against this ordinance, please approach the podium. If not, public comment is closed and the council will proceed with a vote. Councilman Morado. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Roderick. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Thank you. Next item, please. The next item is reports of other city officials. There is on item A, mayoral communications appointment of Fire Chief Glenn Quick. Any announcement or just communication? Okay. The next item is city solicitor Mike Marcello, claims committee report. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Council President, members of the city council, as you know, the city council met as a claims committee beginning at 6.30 uh, p.m. and took the following actions. On new claims, Susan Jacobs Carrera, uh, an amount of $1,440.66 was referred to the Rhode Island Department of Transportation. Claim of Wayne F. Uh, uh, Facto, the amount of $489 for a sewer backup was denied. Claim of Dorian M. Gerard was uh, the amount of unspecified damages was uh, referred to the city's insurance carrier. The claim of uh, Michelle Marshall, Marshall in the amount of $225 was approved by the unanimous vote of the city council. The claim of Ethan Jacob Pacheco in the amount of $3,736.83 was referred to the city's insurance, cap, cap, insurance carrier. I'm sorry. The claim of Paula M. Prezioso uh, was referred to the uh, paving contractor. 
uh, by a vote of the city council. The claim amount was $380.92. The claim of Rochelle Richard in the amount of um, $267.65 it was denied. The claim of Desiree uh, Spitaleri in the amount of $1 million was referred to the city's trust, excuse me, the, insur the Rhode Island Intellectual Trust, the city's insurance carrier. The following suit abatement charges were proved unanimously unless otherwise uh, indicated in the following amounts. The claim of Antonio Arruda in the amount of $400.82. The claim of Carol J. Bellevue in the amount of $258.30. Claim of Richard uh, Leonardo in the amount of one hundred ninety dollars and sixty-three cents. The claim of uh, Robin Morse in the amount of two hundred forty-one dollars and twenty-two cents, and the claim of John Sullivan in the amount of one hundred twenty-one dollars and sixty-eight cents were all approved. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. City Solicitor. The next item is resolutions for a vote. If the first item is item A, resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application to the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management Recreation Development Grant Program, the Splash Pad Program, or the Splash Pad Project, sponsored by Council Vice President Rodericks. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I guess there was one more item <laughs> for myself. Uh, but basically, uh, I had been in touch with um, members of our economic planning and development office, recreation department, um, the mayor's office, talked to individually to a couple council persons, and I know there's some trepidation about moving too fast on some projects. However, I think this is an opportunity for the youth of our community. I should say, in addition to those officials that I talked to, I talked to a bunch of kids at a recent uh, Little League game, which thankfully fall ball is now over. And there's this opportunity for this grant. I think, and maybe we can ask Mr. Fazioli, but I think the uh, grant application deadline is something like the 17th of December or 18th. Um, we, we, oh, it's before that. It's before our next meeting. So if we do anything, it would have to be tonight. And for the seed money that we would have to put up, which is available through our capital fund, I also see it as being available through that Live Nation Recreation Fund, which we haven't touched a penny yet, and there's still about $70,000 in that. I think our our um, contribution is about 26000 Bill, okay, and DEM will pay for the, the balance over $150,000. And so there was some conversation about where would we put a splash pad? And what I think in talking to uh, the kids who frequent Pierce Field and in talking to the Pierce Field rec workers, um, and if we can get the coalition built up with the adjacent Towny Pride Memorial Park where we start getting more activity, what better place than where we have several hundred kids on most days in the summer? There's a captive audience there. There was some talk about do we want to put it in Riverside, do we want to put it in Rumford. Well, the city has embarked on a plan years ago, not with any of us probably, and I know as a, as a playground counselor back a few decades ago, we had a playground system. There were 22 playgrounds, and you went to your neighborhood playground. That has been done away with. We have one playground now that is official, and it's a day camp, and with working parents today and single parent families, uh, it seems to be working, and that's at Pierce Stadium. I know I take a, a family member there once in a while, pick him up or drop him off, and he goes every day. So I've been there at times. There's baseball camps, there's tennis, there's basketball, there's regular campers, and on a warm day, you could see two, three hundred kids there. So why put it out in a park where nobody goes anymore? Because a lot of these kids get bus to Pierce or they're dropped off. That's the playground of the city. And they're there, there's supervision, there are counselors. Um, on a hot day, the, the water could be turned on, they go through it. I, I know there's a cost for water, but the, 
the grant itself would more than pay for the usage of water for like the next eight to ten years. And we talked about some ideas of regulating it. If it's if there's a day where there's not a lot of kids there, if it's cloudy or cool, then don't turn it on. There must be a way to regulate it. On a day when you have a lot of kids there, make it available. So if we're going to do it, the, the factors we have to consider tonight is are there's a window for this grant. It's not automatic. If we don't get the grant, then we don't spend the seed money either. So we just don't do it. But if we get the grant, and if there's not enough time, someone said to me, um, well, you know, it's a lot of work. Who's, how are we going to do it? Well, I assume the grant would, would have contractors come in. I don't think our staff bills the, play, the thing. And if it can't be for this year, it could be next year, but at least we get the grant. If we don't apply, we get zero. So all of the other frustrations we have with capital projects and things, I think we need to put that aside and look at the best interests of the kids of the city. Pierce Stadium is something that we want to build up. We around the corner with the Memorial Park. Uh, there are changes happening there. We're redesigning Pierce. Uh, there are other uses. It may become more of a facility for the younger kids if, in fact, our high school is going to play football games behind the high school, which they're talking about doing. So there's a lot of potential at Pierce Stadium, and to me, it's a good opportunity. It's a win-win, and I agreed to sponsor this and support it. Uh, thank, thank you for Con listening. Thank you, Councilman. Um, and I'm just going to expand a little bit on this and how I feel and why I feel the way I do with respect to this. And I'm going to go back to what I had mentioned early on. Um, I have absolutely no idea and no clue to most, if not all, the projects that were approved in the past. More importantly, I don't have a dollar amount. Uh, what was approved, um, you know, I was provided with this this, afternoon, uh, this evening, the, the capital improvement projects that were uh, approved in green, and um, have discussion for those in yellow. However, there's no dollar amount. I, I have no idea whether we exceeded the amount uh, that was requested or how much we're under that amount at this point in time. And, and before I proceed to vote in a fashion, I, I like to have the numbers in front of me. I like to know exactly what those numbers are. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that. I, you know, one of the things that I talked about during the budget uh, hearings is, is that, you know, I, I need to get a better grasp on what we have as far as, first of all, I, or I should let me just go back. I, I like to get a better grasp and understanding of from financially where do we stand with respect to those projects that have been approved and how much has been approved. And before I vote to approve anything going forward at this point in time with respect to the capital improvement projects, that I need to have those numbers because I had a set of numbers in my mind that I alluded to early on during the budget process that how much I intend on. What my in my mind, how much I intend on spending, and I have, I have nothing's been brought to the council at least to me at this point in time as to how much. And these projects are trickling in, little by little at this point in time. So I have no no clue to where we mm -hmm. are as far as um, where we stand with expenditures for these capital improvement projects. Can, can I just uh, answer a couple points and I'll then I'll uh, listen to the rest. Um, uh, this sheet that I, I gave everyone today was just a kind of a summary I put together. But I, I think that our budget book did have all those numbers because when we were looking at those pages of capital projects, it had dollar signs to it. And we were talking about, and I don't know, Malcolm is here tonight, maybe he can, if he hears something that's totally out of line, maybe we should ask him. But there was, the number I kept hearing was a little under four million and that it wasn't in line items of the budget, it was a separate capital account, right? And then as we did a project, it draws down. So we go to 3.8, 3.7, whatever. So I, I don't think we're, I know we're not over that. I know in this 
project that I'm talking about for recreation at Pierce, we do have numbers. It's $26,000 seed money, and we get the grant to do the, the rest. Um, so that, that number's there. I don't even see that as part of like the past problems that you're talking about, which I agree with you on. This is a grant opportunity that became available. And people have said, fine, if you don't want it, we'll go to another city. Somebody's going to apply. Um, so it's not that big a deal to the DEM, but it's available, and it's not even guaranteed. So that number is solid, $26,000, which we have. I can just give you one account, Live Nation. So that was my question, Councilman, because um, I do support the project in itself. Um, I think it's a great addition to Pierce Field because of the coverage that it gets with all the children over there. I think it would be a great asset for that summer program and um, the kids all in that neighborhood and all the kids throughout the city because the boys club comes down and we know uh, kids that go to the boys club come from all areas of the city. Um, my, my question, I guess, would be do we really have to take it out of the capital budget when we have right. Live Nation you know, that we have that 75 or so thousand dollars that comes out of parks, and this would be in the parks department. Mm -hmm. We don't we don't even need, so certainly move forward by all means with the grant proposal um, and application, and, and if we get awarded it, then the city should allocate uh, $26,000 out of that line item that lies um, in the budget uh, in the in the um, parks and recreations, that's seventy five thousand from revenue from Live Nation, and not to mention Live Nation is also with us for a full another year. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get that revenue again this year. Um, that would be more than enough to seed this project. I don't think it needs to mm -hmm. come out of the capital budget per se. But as a council member, I do approve of any money that the twenty six thousand from an unused line item that sits in a in a. Um, a budget department mm, that would point. go for mm -hmm. it. It's a good point, and if I could add, um, and, and I want to thank, it was the council president who brought that focus. I didn't even know we had that Live Nation account mm -hmm. till he brought that up in our budget process, and um, our director of finance said we have not spent one penny, right. and it's going to build next year. There'll be another 70 or more. But I'd like to ask the solicitor, um, Marcelo, it, that monies, do you know, can we as a resolution direct that this $26,000 come from that account? Or Yes, you're saying? Well, well that money was specifically earmarked for, for parks and recreation. Yes, but what so about I don't think individual? I, I don't think we need to have a vote or put out a resolution when it was specifically at the initial stage when Live Nation came in front of the council and requested and said the money is going to be geared specifically for parks and recreation. Right, but not a splash pad in particular. But, well, so no, suppose but parks and recreation could be anything. Suppose they don't want to do it. Suppose, Suppose the uh, economic development or the mayor's office, whoever says, I mean, that's what my question is, who controls the money? Well, you're the, the appropriator. Yeah. So. so I think. Um, so I would think we'd want to vote on it. I think we, as a council, because that money's there and it, it isn't for um, expenditures of the day-to-day -day budgeting for that department, mm -hmm. it's yeah. um, so they can't just use it freely because mm -hmm. it, it's not, it has to come to us in a capital budget, I would mm -hmm. imagine, improvement. So um, this resolution, I think um, we could amend on the floor and s instead of it coming out of the capital improvement budget, mm -hmm. we can amend it to state that it's coming out of mm -hmm. the parks and recreations line item that is funded by live, oh, I don't know what the proper wording is, that would be your department. So <laughs> just so, so the council understood, this, this is just an application. You're authorizing the planning department and director of economic development to apply for the grant. To the extent that you, we get the money, we can always, right, it, not. we have to match it. You can always direct it to it. You can always pass another resolution directing how we're going to spend that money. So this, this and again, a resolution is non-binding. A resolution is just really giving them permission to right. apply. So I wouldn't get yeah. too concerned about. We I try would, to be more specific so you know where the money might be coming from, but right. it's not. It's not binding. I, I would. I would say just stri in my personal to make it, me feel better about the capital improvement discussions and where those monies have been allocated to just approve this with striking the cap the wording saying capital budget mm -hmm. um, and just mm -hmm. say that the city would approve including the funds of $26,000 to match. Mm -hmm. 
wherever it comes from. You can decide yeah. later. Yep. Right, right. Councilman Morado. Uh, yeah, I'd just like to uh, give my opinion on this uh, topic. Uh, you know, I was on the, so my thought on the remaining capital improvement projects uh, in line with uh, President Brito, uh, I feel that there's so many projects already on the table and we've already had the discussions and proven that you know, we can't even keep up with the previous council's yep. projects. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I was going to be a flat out. And I think this, these remaining projects can wait until the next budget season. However, and my other, my, my concern with this capital improve, uh, this uh, splash pad, you know, hearing uh, locations such as Sabin Point uh, behind the old uh, Oldham School. And that, that to me, that didn't make any sense. You know, um, hearing what Councilman Rodericks is saying about Pierce Field, talking to and meeting with our planning director, who I know is very knowledgeable, and I look to him for guidance on these decisions. And he answered every question I had, and I was satisfied with that. Uh, and now hearing that this money can come out at Live Nation, that makes me mm -hmm. a lot happier. I know it's only twenty six thousand, but you know it's it's still twenty six thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, I've changed my opinion, at least for this item. So, uh, it, it, but the, my question, so my question is, how do we know that it's definitely going to be installed at Pierce Field? You know, well, I'm, I'm convinced after talking to everyone involved that that's where they, they agree it should go that seems but like we could add that to the end of this because that seems like the, well, the best right you know place with all the uh the kid activities and such. yes that would be that would get the most use you know so i would just caution you that again the resolution that was posted for just the approval to apply for the grant if you're now going to specify where where it's, where this park is going to go, I think you might want to follow the open meetings law. So I think it's just better to just approve the. So leave again, it alone. The, the, the most important thing is the, the now, therefore, be it resolved that the city council of city east province authorizes the planning so department to submit the necessary. It does plan. say piss field, so I'm happy with that. It does actually say on the resolution at the end. So yeah, okay, that, that takes care of that. But it does mention that the capital budget I'm looking at this that it would include. Again, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the whereas part of it. That's just oh, kind of fun. Right. So, so would anyone like to make a motion at this point in time? I make a motion to approve. Okay. Would anyone like to second that motion for approval? Second. Right. Madam Clerk, roll we'll call vote. Councilman Murado. Aye. Councilman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Roderick. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Uh, also, while we're on this topic, um, can the council get a um, a list of those projects that have been approved? the tally amount for capital improvements for each project and how much has been approved to date? I think that was already asked, yes. Yes. It was asked, but... No, no, I mean, I think we, we already, we, someone directed, I think another council person mm. directed uh, right, but Mr. We, Furtado. We, no, at we, this meeting. Okay. We, so. But do we need, like, a, a resolution? No, no, we can get it. Let's okay. make a request. So, so, so received, Good. and so I will relay that message, Council President. Thank you. Next resolution, please. Next resolution is the resolution authorizing the submission of a grant application to the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management Recreation Development Grant Program. This is for the, gla the Grassy Plains project, sponsored by Councilman Murado. Again, so this is another one of these uh, projects that my first thought was why not wait until the next uh, budget season. But, you know, when I first, when I was first elected, I was contacted by some of the residents in that area. And, uh, and then we had a, uh, I had a community meeting and the residents again attended that meeting. Uh, I've met with them at meetings at their home. I had meetings at our community meeting. And this has, had, this has been a concern from the beginning. We, we did a walkthrough early on in the year. Myself, the mayor, and Councilman Rodericks, also with DPW. That grassy plain park is highly underutilized. It is a, uh, there was, uh, we addressed the initial safety concerns, which were uh, huge uh, divots in the uh, terrain, and that was filled in, I believed, by DPW. That was a low cost, easy fix. There are, it's just in such bad disrepair, and I was surprised to see it how huge that area is and it could really be
developed into something, you know, that's usable. Uh, I did meet with our planning director, and uh, he did explain that this, the plans have been in place to try to revitalize that Grassy Plain Park for quite a while now, but it, it just never got done. Again, this is another one of these match grant, uh, grant matching funds. Uh, so I put this on a docket, a resolution for a vote. And uh, as I said, it was something that initially I was looking into the future for the next budget season. But uh, after talking to our planning director and uh, knowing that this has to be in by December 12th, I believe, along with the splash pad to even mm -hmm. be qualified, uh, I put on the docket for a vote. Councilman, what's, what's the matching amount? It is 100000 correct? 150000 and we would get uh, the matching grant would be 450, 400. Let the record show, Mr. Fazio, we held up four fingers. No, just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, uh, just for the record, right now, because I don't have the total amount, I'm just going to abstain from this vote. Um, I have no idea where we stand as far as expenditures for capital improvements, um, and uh, I, I will abstain for this for now, Mr. President. So, if you want to proceed with a vote. Uh, I just want to add, um, and, I, and I appreciate Council President's view on knowing where we are. That's why I earlier put that other item on the agenda to clean up these capital projects. I'm in full agreement with you that I think we need a, a good handle on it. But I'm satisfied with some of these projects. I'm satisfied that we're, that $4 million that was there, that we haven't gone over it. We're under it, so it's there, but as you say, uh, it, we don't know where. Um, Grassy Plains Playground, at the risk of aging myself, I earlier said I was a playground counselor. That's where I was in 1972, and it is a massive piece of property. I would think people that don't venture into Riverside much are just not aware of it, because you don't see it from the street. You got to go in, and I'm sure the plan will be to develop a better opening and parking. You can put 10 soccer fields in there, a football field, tennis court. There's all kinds of land. I'm not saying that's the plan. I'm, I'm just trying to give you a, a vision of the size of this place. And I know the abutting homeowners want us to be careful about it, and I agree with them, and I'm sure we will be. But... Um, Again, it's about quality of life in East Providence for me and for uh, not only the youth but the adults of the city, and I, I'm in strong support of this also. Thank you, Councilman. If I can just add, speaking of the abutting property, mm. that's also a concern, and the plans that were presented to me by the planning director addresses those concerns and also addresses uh, parking, which is a obviously, you know, uh, grassy plains. Yeah. There's no part. There's no street parking. It has to be all off street. So I was satisfied with the, and that's not a final draft. That's not a final plan. But at least they are recognizing, the planning department is recognizing those concerns. So I was satisfied with that. So if there are no other comments, I'd move approval. Uh, before you I'm uh, sorry. move for approval, uh, one of the things that I stated early on during the budget process was that of that money, I wanted to take 2.3 million dollars out of that money uh, for the sake of. A rainy day fund uh, in an event that the economy does go south and at some point in time we figured that it was start to head in that direction it's not going to be as rosy as it is today perhaps another two years or three years or who knows hopefully it is but I want to have that money aside and I stated this early on and I think I think we're going beyond that amount so out of that 3.6, 3.9 million that we had. We were taught, taking 2.3 out of the former sink money. Um, that money was used for that reason and that reason only. And I want to make sure that that money was set aside. Anything over and beyond that, I was going to approve for capital. I was going to approve for capital improvement projects. However. I don't know where we stand at this point in time. I don't know if we're still beyond that $2.3 million or not because I have absolutely no dollar amount in front of me. And I haven't had any dollar amount since the budget workshop as to what was approved and how much was approved. And that's why I'm leaning towards that because I think we should have that money as a safety valve for, for security of the city in the future. Um, 
and and as these projects trickle in, we're get we're approaching the 3.6, 3.9, or possibly even 4 million. I don't. Again, I don't know. So that's why I, I, I'm not only going to abstain, but I will vote uh, against this because I just have absolutely no idea financially. So this is where we stand. And, and not to interrupt you, but we had also approved that we had talked about. Uh, not approving the $200,000 for the sprinkler system at the library because as the councilman had alluded to early on that that was money that could have come out of uh, 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 the Champlin Foundation um, that we would have not taken $200,000 in the event that it was approved um, out of the capital improvement project that would have been an extra $200,000. I've also talked about you know the uh, uh, money from the uh, uh, the with, what's the insurance? The inter the the local trust. The the the, 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 the local trust that there there are money for there was money for for that as well. That that's grant money uh, that I was thinking of. You know that I had mentioned early on that we wouldn't have to match. We wouldn't have to take twenty six thousand out of our own coffer. We wouldn't have to take out an additional one hundred and fifty thousand. So to me, I didn't see, and I don't to this day, I don't see the rush for this these projects because there's a possibility that we can save that extra 200,000, in this case now, 400,000, almost a half a million dollars by grants, by from receiving from outside uh, outside sources. So again, because I don't know where we stand financially, what capital improvement and how much money we have, that I'm, uh, I'm just gonna. Can, uh, without belaboring this, can, can yes. we just ask the finance director if he has an idea on that? Uh, but, uh, let me just say something real quick. We can, and I don't wanna belabor this also. Right, we, right. I mean, we, but you, we was not much. You want to put it on for a vote? Let's, yep, let's I completely put it on agree with you, and that's my concern with that. We need that. We need that cushion, a rainy day fund. Okay, some of these projects can go over, and that's why uh, on our earlier discussion about that uh, budget ordinance, to have to close out some of these previous, mm -hmm. you know, capital mm -hmm. improvement funds. And I don't know if this may be a question now for the director or the planning director, a finance or planning director. Is there any way we can get a or a, a figure of the past capital improvement projects as to where we stand, unused uh, projects that, that even though they were voted on, they are not going to continue, uh, projects that went, came on the budget. Is there any way to get that figure to the council uh, by the next council meeting? Malcolm, do you mind Maybe coming that's a up rhetorical to the question. Uh, and I don't want to. I don't no, want to labor I, I, this anymore we're, as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put this up. But for you, you get at this the point, point and that's the reason just, why it's yeah. important for us to know. Yeah. yeah. To, to make these decisions better, because mm -hmm. that there could be money that what happens with that money now, okay. and does it roll but over? And, before Malcolm starts, isn't it true though that the capital development account, whatever it is, four million to start with, can only be used for capital projects. You can't use it for operating. Budget expenses, so the rainy day would only be for capital projects. But we couldn't take it and lower taxes or fix um, buy it buy something. Or absolutely correct. However, there was money that was transferred over from the so-called sink sink fund that is non-discretionary. It could be used for either or. That money, the one percent that is set aside through taxpayers. Uh, um, through the taxpayers, you're absolutely right. That money's for capital projects and capital projects only. But we're talking about two separate accounts that we had at one point in time where we have restricted and unrestricted. That 2.3 million that I'm referring to is unrestricted money. It can be used just about anything, if I'm not mistaken. And then you have the restricted money coming to 1% for the capital improvement. That money can be used only for capital improvement projects. So your, your question, Councilman? So my question is, can we get a, uh, a printout or a number as to what is left over from the previous capital improvement projects from the last council, the last budget season? Um, yes, and my latest report uh, on, on the monthly budget report expenditures, the last page actually had the capital uh, fund 31100 that had all the projects, the balances, but that that's easy to get. Why? What? Easy to get, you said. Yes, I mean, that, that was presented. I think you guys should have heard that already. Right. Uh, it was in the capital, in the 
monthly budget report. Um, but uh, yeah, I can get that. You're saying we have that? Should. When, when did we? I, I don't have that report. If, if you're referring to the report that was given us during the council, during the budget hearings, or no, recently? No, something recently. Uh, the I last don't. few months, you should be getting, I've been sitting the clerk, the, the monthly okay, uh, I don't expense have report. Those, yes. And that Do was, I? that was um, what it would be listed under is, let's see, council report, October expenses, and mm. capital. It was, I think there were three, uh, can, we three items November, in that email. November 13th. Mm -hmm. It has, right. it, just like Malcolm was saying, it has October expenses. Right. There's one, two, three. And then if you scroll over to the very last one, it says capital 31100. And that came from you? Um, it came from Malcolm and then forwarded to you when uh, um, Malcolm originally sent it. Actually, Malcolm. Yeah. Who, sent the, who sent that email? Um, I haven't Malcolm, Malcolm sent it to me and I forwarded it to you guys on Wednesday, November 13th. Okay. Mal Malcolm, is it possible for you to summarize? Was it f about $4 million that we had coming into this past budget process? When we had the budget books and it listed all the projects, was there about four million? Yeah, it was three million six hundred ninety thousand. Okay, three six nineties. Do you know what we've spent? No, I actually have a list here, but I'm I'm thinking I'm missing a few. Um, I have um, um, the listing of the three point six nine and the ones that I have approved, but I think I did miss a few. But like on the on the highway, we have. The sweeper for two hundred thirty thousand. Uh, the six wheel dump one hundred sixty thousand. I think all the DPW and buildings I have open. Yeah, that wasn't approved. None of those. Uh, yeah. And that I think there's close to two million. I think that hasn't been applied. Hasn't been approved. Because um, DPW um, highway, like I said, two hundred thirty, one hundred sixty. Sanders forty five thousand. Did we um, vote on the Weaver Library? Yes. yes. That was approved? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. the last meeting. Okay, the last night. I don't think I have those in here. So for the next meeting, would you be able to answer Council President Brito's question, um, what's left in that capital account? Because by now, we voted on everything up to tonight. The splash pad is not going to be in the capital account, so you don't have to worry about that. The grassy plains, if it prevails tonight, that would be. And that would be the last thing we voted on. Huh? Is, is that reasonable? Or? Yes. Okay. Your uh, list that you provided, Councilman uh, Rodericks, that's an accurate list. Of, that's right. I, I think it might be missing, um, like the dog, the dog park that we, a couple of smaller things, right? So it sounds like, uh, Council President, we can have your answer for the next meeting, what's left. So the, what you said as far as capital expenditures is overall, right? Yes, of the 3.6, how okay. much has been approved? On, yeah, okay. Tony Pride is not on there. It wasn't on the, uh, it was, the that was added. Isn't, yeah, it's not in there. Yeah. Okay. Quoted. We can work with it for the next. Yeah, we can work with it. For, all right. So, um, did you, we have uh, a motion? Did I, you make a motion? I made a motion, and I'm not sure who second. Nobody second. I didn't have a motion. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll make the motion to approve the um, Grassy Plains project. I'll second it. Roll call vote, please. Councilman Morado. Aye. Councilwoman Souza. Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks. Aye. And Council President Brito. Aye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Malcolm. Next item, please. Next item is adjournment. Can we, can we convene with the executive session? I would like to make a motion to adjourn. So um, move. Before, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. just before we do that, um, I just want to reiterate to um, the finance director and the director of mayor's office if all the council members could please um you know get a copy so in addition to what the council president is seeking i'd like to know um the running list of 
2016, 17, 18 yeah. capital improvement projects, funds that have been allocated, projects where they are um, in terms of um, production, and what that balance is to. Um, so 2016, what are outstanding projects? What is the balance on that year end? And then that moving forward every year till fiscal year 2020. Um, so that should be four years' worth of capital improvement um, budgeted items that have been approved and where they stand and how much money has been allocated and how much money is left. So that way we get a really overall um, idea of what the end number is that's in that fund, that, that capital budget. Um, and, and I think there's, there's no harm in if a project doesn't get started for a legitimate reason. We just need to know about it. Mm -hmm. right. So we can keep a running tally or decide if we're going to revisit it and cancel it. Or I, I'm, We're not saying, and I'm not saying as a council member, I want all of these things done tomorrow. You know, I realize there's a process, but we just want to be informed. And, and as Councilman Brito said, we need to know the dollars. I think that's all we're asking for. Thank you. Anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Roll call vote. Councilman Morado? Aye. Councilwoman Souza? Aye. Council Vice President Rodericks? Aye. Council President Brito? Aye. I was going to say nay, but. <laughs> there you were. <laughs>